What's up, family? This is your boy, Professor Cornelius Ward, and I hope that you have been profiting with the professor. Uh, I am back looking again at Kiwi Yen. Um, I wanted to just make this brief announcement here. I want to uh, be a blessing to both the novices and the professionals. So bear with me. This is going to be a little longer than usual. It's not going to be a three minute video. I'm probably going to use up 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing is first off, I'm going to be uh, appeasing those who just want to get right to the meat. I'm going to give you the answer to where I'm going to be getting in and out of my trades. Uh, right after that, I'm going to get into some technical analysis for novices. And then I'm going to move into the technical analysis for professionals. All right. So let's have some fun with it. Let's go. All right. Looking at Kiwi in. I'm going to be uh, selling and I have three different levels here. Let's see if I can drag it down. Oh, you can see it there. So the first one here is I have a sell stop order at 88.33. I also have a sell limit order in case price action continues the uptrend within this area of resistance, which is reacting to supply. And we'll take a look, look at that later. That's where I'm getting this 89 from. But based on the even higher time frame, the 21 day, which we'll look at on the professional side, that's at 89.33. So I have that one as well. So I have three sell orders set up as a dollar cost averaging. Uh, that's DCA. What that simply means is whatever I would normally trade, I would just divide that up. So let's say I trade a normally a standard lot. Then you can divide that up into four different areas within a range and just put you know, for 25,000 unit positions on, and then that'll help uh, lower your amount of risk. But if all of them hit, then great. You still make all the money you were making, but it just lowers your, your risk that you uh, put on each particular pair. So that's what I'm going to be doing here because this is, in my opinion, a pullback and not a retracement. Pullbacks are aggressive. If you trade them, retracements are not aggressive because retracements go a much further distance than a pullback. So in my opinion, this is just a pullback based on um, average true range of the Kiwi in. Uh, I believe this is just gonna pull back here and then we're gonna be back in position to go long again, which is what the big picture is for the Kiwi in. Uh, once we get into our sell positions here, then if it begins to short and continues this short, I'm gonna shave off a quarter of my position at 87.80 then at 86.80, TP3 is going to be 86.15. And then finally, I'm going to close all the sell orders at 84.90 because that's where I believe supply, uh, based on the P2P indicator that we have here, uh, supply has been identified within this range. We're going to pick it up with a buy limit order at about 84.60. And just in case it wicks down a little further, I DCA this order here as well. And I have another buy order at it at the extreme of 84 with a tight stop loss, in my opinion, of 8360. You guys know I'm the king of swing. That's what I love trading. And so my stop losses are very far away. Uh, I don't trade with heavy positions. And so that allows me to be able to keep my stop loss far away and enjoy the trend, uh, no matter how much they may wick against me uh, before taking on that trend. So just wanted to give you guys those numbers there. That's what I'm going to be doing now. Let's get to some technical stuff. This is what I believe. I'm a geek. So this is some of the technical stuff that we're going to be looking at. I'm going to turn off the what I uh, analyzed and annotated using P2P Indie on the low time frame. I'm now going to turn on what I annotated on the high time frame using P2P Indie. I'm then going to come over here, remove my orders so that those are not in the way because we just want to learn right now. Bam. All right. Let's help out the novices. Uh, real quick and let's go ahead and do that and get into the technical analysis for the novices all right so once you go over here and you select your pair you look down you'll see this uh, panel here at the bottom of the panel uh, go further down you may even have to drag it like this in order to catch it uh, but if you drag it you'll see where it says more technicals click on more technicals there and then you'll see your pair here and you'll see different uh, time frames and so this is the daily time frame that it's on. It's defaulted to that. So let's just leave it there uh, for tutorial's sake. And what we're looking at here are two different types of indicators. All right. So uh, the one over here to the left is called oscillators. And the one to the right here is called moving averages. 
and they both attempt to do something similar. Okay, they don't do the same thing, but they do something similar, and that is to try to map out what is the price action that's happening currently. What is price doing, and how is it moving? And so, let's start with the moving average. Uh, the moving average, what it does is it takes the closing price for each uh, day in this case, because that's the time period we're on. So it takes the closing price of each day, and it then calculates that by whatever number of days. Here are the top moving averages that most people use. And so you can see this is averaging out 10 days versus 20 versus 30, 50, 100, 200, so on and so forth. Okay. So it averages out those days and it gives you a value of what the average price for those last few days were. Uh, with that, what you can then see is what has the value of the, that price been doing uh, over time? Every single day that we move into a new set of 10 days, we get to see what the value is. And if that value keeps dropping, then we know that it's going to start selling. If the value keeps increasing every time a new day occurs, then that means that we should be buying and the trend is going to be strong. And that's why you would get this buying action here. Okay. Now going over here to oscillators. An oscillator works a little differently because what it does is it takes this value here and it compares this value, this 8773 in this case, to the 88. Okay. Now it's it's doing it in its own special way. I'm giving you guys the, the big broad picture of how moving averages and oscillators work. Okay. Um, so it's basically taking the value and we'll just use this as an example, this 87, and it compares it to current price. If the average value over the last 10 days has been less than the current price, that means that selling pressure is picking up or distribution is picking up or we're hitting some resistance or we're coming into supply. But in any case, the oscillator is going to start telling you, hey, we're hitting some neutral territory. And that's what I wanted to show the novices. Look here. We have more neutral and one selling and only two buying indications by our oscillators on average. So what we have is eight are showing neutral, two are showing buying, one is showing selling. All together, on average, we have it to new at neutral. Over here, most of them show buying. Why? Because it's at 88. It's obviously higher than this value here. So it's still strong and going up. But um, we see here that it is starting to show one of them is neutral, but one of them actually is showing selling. So something's going on here. Even when you average out the oscillator and the moving averages together, what you end up getting on its summary is that the strong buying is starting to wear out. It's going down. So you take that information, which is the novices, and I hope that helped you novices uh, with trading. It gives you at least something to look at. Now we're going to compare that looking at the chart, actually, from a professional standpoint. We're going to look at the chart and we can see the reason why we're looking at this sell stop order at this price is because this is a wick over wick um, with an immediate retest coming down. So this is showing me some downtrend. This is also the beginning of uh, resistance. Here we have the proximal resistance line at 88.34. We have the distal of resistance at 89.10. Where am I getting that from? I'm getting that from this two day chart going back in history. And we're looking at this supply uh, represented by this doji candle here or a base candle. And we can also see this supply on the one week. Okay. So let's go over to the one week real quick and let's look at that. Now, if I look at that same area on the one week, it's a little broader. Well, not broader, I'm sorry, uh, lengthier here. So it's a little longer. That's because that represents the supply zone. So the supply zone is much wider than the resistance range. Okay. But for those of you who know how to read uh, charts, you can clearly see this is a drop based drop uh, with a nice strong leg out showing us uh, some selling pressure. We can look all the way across. We can see here very clearly some resistance. If I go even further back, that's some very nice resistance sitting there. Let's go into the future to our current. We can see it got hit with some earlier resistance. Why? 
because this was the beginning of that supply. Remember that supply started a little lower and was a little higher. So it started hitting that supply, but now it has broken through. Buyers have gone through that. The problem is the buyers got to deal with the sellers again, getting into more resistance. So they're going to probably get hit again, but when they come back down, I don't think they're going to go any lower than this. Uh, the reason why is because if we go back to our two day, we can see here that there is another rally base rally that was created on the way up from this pivot low. And so I believe that this base candle is going to represent uh, an area of demand. And this is where we can pick up those buy orders. So if I turn that back on, let's turn this off, turn that on. Now you can see this is why I have that buy order sitting there after coming down here take profit here we're going to get that buy order and take that back up so that's why that was there uh once we get all the way uh back down here you know and we get our buy position going and we start to go back up again i want to show you guys real quickly or swiftly as possible but I know you're having some fun with the technical side. For those of you who are geeks and you're still listening to me, you're a geek. If you didn't know it, you're a geek. You shouldn't have stayed on here. <laughs> you did it to yourself. All right. So after it comes back down from this uh, resistance and supply range, we can even see here we have another uh, week over week downtrend. Uh, we have some downtrend back here. Uh, nice, nice, nice. Uh, I hope it holds. I hope it doesn't just create another uh, base and then a leg out to rally up because I really want to uh, take this uh, opportunity to capture a lower buy position so I can get up here to this uh, sell order here. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be shorting and getting down here. And once it gets down, I'm sorry, here to this major support level here, I believe that's where we're going to start getting this uptrend. And once we get back into the uptrend, I don't believe this is going to hold here. We're going to get a rough, some more being sort of rough waters, I'll say. Uh, but it's not going to hold and eventually we're going to get up here to the sell limit order, which is where I believe Kiwi in is heading. Okay. So it's going to be a while for us to get here, but I do think this is the journey that we're going to be taking as far as price action is concerned. All right. Well, with that being said, I hope that you enjoyed yourself today, both novices and professionals. Uh, if you guys uh, haven't followed me and you do want to follow me so that you can be flagged or, um, you know, receive an indication that I posted something, go ahead and do so. Uh, if you want to pay what we just did today forward, and I hope you do, uh, if you feel blessed by this information here and you're, you've been making money alongside me, then uh, go ahead and be a blessing to somebody and just give it a boost. I did all the work for you already. So all you got to do is hit these little rocket ships and whoever types in Kiwi in, they'll get to see it as well. Uh, also, you can reach us uh, on our website, the whole team at ToshiMarkets.com. You can also find us on Twitter and YouTube at Effective HNW. And you can chat with us, ask us questions about the markets, the economy. You can ask us for an analysis. We do a free analysis. That's how I got this Kiwi in. Uh, my boy Vic, uh, he's the one who reached out to me right here. Vic underscore NZ uh, reached out to me about Kiwi in. And so I decided to reanalyze it and take a look at it. That's how we got here. So we do this for free. Doesn't matter if it's Forex, uh, equities, it could be indices, CFDs, cryptocurrencies, does not matter. Our team, we got you covered. All right, this is your boy, Professor Cornelius Ward. I love you. God bless you. Hope you guys are profiting with me. I am out. I'll see you guys on the other side. Take care.